Simon Cruz, I'm the uh, competition operations manager. I uh, do all my work in the community rugby sphere. Um, and yeah, electronic match card and, and the training aspects of it comes under my remit. So here we are. So thank you for joining us tonight. Um, so what I've got is I've got a... Um, it's an odd noise. Not sure if that's someone who's just come in. Just for that noise. <laughs> I think we're good, good for now. That's fine. Just throw me off before we start. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to run through a quick presentation, kind of the the words, why, the what, um, and then um, just kind of go through uh, some examples of, of how the match card works. For those of you who've used match cards previously, um, there probably won't be much in the way of new information here. Um, this is very much more an introduction to how it works and what we can do with it. Um, but thank you for said for your time with us. So I will just get my sheet screen shared and then we'll go from there. Perfect. Uh, I'm just gonna minimize this. Right. So um electronic match card train. So this, yeah, that's a good start. So so as we just click through. So what is electronic match card? So again, just over the basics of it. So we introduced it in 2016, 17, which now seems quite a while ago. Uh, and it's now been made mandatory uh, in all our few league competitions. Um, so in the men's league, that's from uh, from, the, from the Premiership all the way down to uh, Counties 5 in the men's game. And then in the women's game, uh, it will be, again, uh, PWR down to National Challenge 3. Uh, some Inner Warrior Series uh, will also utilise them as well. Um, we do now use it in some of our national age grade competitions across the boys and the girls game. Um, it, it is as it says also available for all non other uh non RFU competitions, and um, that's kind of more of the whim of the competition organizer at that point. Um, but they can do so, um, if they wish. Um, and we're in the process of kind of expanding its reach in the age grade game. Um, what it is directly, so it's a method of input and results and updating the league tables instantly. That's just a screenshot from the mobile version that we'll go through soon. Um, it's all integrated with it with GMS, which I'm sure many of you are here are familiar with, um, and it allows the reporting of tracking of lineups, uh, and also allows you to track player and team statistics. Uh, that again, which I'll get into in a bit, is probably the bit where we've we've done the biggest kind of upgrade from last season. Um, but I said we'll get to that. Um, also, similarly uh, with disciplinary instances as well. Uh, and can also help track suspected concussions, which is something obviously we we kind of want to help uh, people make sure they're they're well informed with. Um, so why why are we using it? So specifically the electronic match card uh, rather than uh, another system uh, of kind of the match card or the previous paper match cards. Um, it may, it's one method that kind of it brings it all together. Uh, which obviously then makes it easier to offer support resources. You'll hear me refer to Community Rugby Help quite a bit. Uh, that's all within the website. There's a lot of various um, of kind of helpful tips on there There's to the search with keywords and that sort of thing, which will make it easier to help out. All of those have just been updated. Um, so that means so they should all be good to go once we get out of this. If there's any questions you've got that you, or you may not have asked at the time. Um, it also helps in terms of uh, easier and more comprehensive reporting. If all of this, if all of this information is going into one place, then that means that we can also now, and especially now, we can now get more out of it um, in terms of outputs based on the data that we input, uh, and that's useful obviously for a number of reasons because it means we can get more in depth and accurate research uh, into those stats, whether it's at a player level or a team level or even at a club level. Um, and following on from that, it's not just at, as I said, it's at that player level as well. Uh, and I'll go into some of those in a little bit more detail in a little bit, um, in which obviously, yeah, just then help give us a better understanding of the playing landscape um, as it's con continually changing. Um, and if we've got the information such as match events, um, those inputs can help to create content. Obviously, now social media is such a major part of things. Uh, whether it's advertising for the and marketing for the club or whether it's just to kind of highlight your players' achievements and that and team's achievements uh, and being able to see all this information based off the match events if they're inputted um allows for uh, allows for that to happen. Um 
So if we just move on to the kind of club benefits, why we want to utilize it, why why we think it's really useful for the clubs. Uh, as I mentioned, those, there's those reports based on the information inputted. It allows you, this is just an example of our comparison tool uh, between two players. So you can kind of see the minutes played, how how often they've played not, uh, which again can be tracked on a season by season basis or across an all time, uh, which means you can easily track the number of minutes that have been played as long as the match events have been inputted. Um, so as we said, track player use. Um, it's something that there's a number of people within the club can access it simply rather than it potentially being in one person's Excel spreadsheet or even in a notebook. Um, this is information that can be can be passed through a number of people with the correct GMS access. Um, the suspected concussion module that I mentioned before, um, basically what will happen with that is if a player is noted as having a suspected concussion, because obviously at community rugby level, we um, we don't have HIAs, we just have suspected concussion uh, with the kind of uh, recognize and remove framework. Uh, what it means is if someone is noted as having a suspected concussion, they are then sent information through our rugby uh, and it also goes to the rugby safe lead as well as the player's email address. Um, and then it, it just helps to give them uh, information around like how to look after themselves, kind of return to play protocols as well. Uh, and again, the statistics are all available on englandrugby.com, obviously with the new website redesign uh, that we've been able to kind of surface more of those and there's a lot more stuff we can do around that now. Uh, I think it, it looks a lot, a lot jazzier for lack of a more eloquent term at the minute, but it's good to see it all. Um, and again, that can help with the kind of marketing aspect of what, what you guys are trying to do. Uh, it's obviously also paperless, so it just helps with things being more sustainable um, and again, more accessible as well, because it's not just in a place. Um, it's It can just be accessed online. Um, in terms of player benefits, so what, which is the next aspect? So this is um, just a snapshot of something that we're looking at doing in terms of the, the clubhouse, which will be launching from October. Um, it's not it's not going to be quite there for the start of the season, but again, this is all part of um, when we've got players now signing up for them, registering for themselves to kind of help with that relationship uh, between them directly and us. Um, it can help them uh, with their course booking, uh, their playing statistics and stuff comes up, kind of figuring out what's going on uh, in the club or their team this week um, and just kind of help to signpost them. Um, but so that'll be launching uh, in, in in and around October. Um, so that's going to be really cool, I think, for the players to, to see and help them be more engaged with the, the information that's going in. Um, what I'm now going to do um, is just kind of do a live, um, as long as my connection is holding, I'm going to do a live uh, example of, a, of an electronic match card. So using the desktop version. So there is two versions. There is a desktop version and there is a mobile version. And they're both done through a website. Uh, it is just a URL. There isn't a GMS app per se as it goes. Um, so I'm just going to flip over to um, page I need. Um, and so this is what this is what it'll look like. So this is the desktop version. Uh, this is me doing it entirely as it would take you guys time to do it. So just using our uh, some of our dummy... Um, teams so this is the initial screen you'll get when you've got the the as long as you've got the correct uh role and permissions which will be level one or three uh and then the match card administrator role within that um so it will usually default to whatever the week is the current week is again this can all be changed as need be um oops, that. so then i'm just going to take this invincibles versus jelly bellies match um obviously i I have a super user access so I can kind of see across both teams. But what we do usually set it up, uh, at least in the RFU leagues, is such that it is a home team can fill in information for the away team just in case they need the help. Uh, what it will usually come into first is this summary uh, screen, which will eventually fill up with all the information that you've inputted and will essentially be all the information that will eventually come into the um, PDF that you will get when you confirm the electronic match card at the end of it. So in terms of inputting a lineup, um, it is so to get a player to appear in here, you will need to make sure that they are registered to, um, and then making sure that, again, depending on what level you play at, if you play at a level where um, 
your league requires RFU registration as opposed to club registration, or it will only be RFU registered play level players who are that will generate in this. If it is just a club registered league, um, then any then those players will show up there as well. So what it will be in this instance. So you will just type in part of their name. Uh, in this instance, I've got two there with A's. So if I just click on James, that will put them in at fullback. Uh, just for the, because I'm going to show some of the functionality uh, and I'm just going to put the other James here in on the bench. So you'll scroll down or so you'll do that for the entire lineup um, as you've got it. Um, and then you will click save. And what that will do is that will confirm that. You will see there's a timestamp uh, that will come up for this so we can tell exactly when uh, lineups have been put in. Um, so as I scroll further down, just see that um, you'll be able to then, once you've clicked save the first time, you'll be able to choose your captain. Uh, you can also save a specific lineup if it's the start of it, but also when it's uh, pre if there's previous matches when we get further through the season, you will just be able to click through those. Um, if you don't have many changes from the previous week, for example, and you can use that as a base and then go from there. Um, so that's saved. So what I'm going to do is I could, I'm also going to put the away team in. Um, again, generally what the leagues will be set to um, is that, uh, again, just clicking through in the exact same matter. Um, so we've got John there uh, in for the away team, um, what it will be set as is that the home lineup and the away lineup are mandatory. Mm -hmm. uh, in that being the case, um, if only the home team puts a lineup uh, and you go to confirm the match card, it won't allow you to do so. What it will do is set it to pending. It will set it to pending, uh, which means that we at least know that you've attempted. And you, uh, we, and or your league secretary will be aware that you've at least attempted to confirm the match card, and that actually it is the. Um, one of the teams hasn't put in their, uh, the, sorry, the away team hasn't put in their lineup. Um, and then that means at least you've done what you need to do. And then you just need to contact your league secretary if there's an issue with that. Um, so that's the case of putting a lineups in. It is literally, as I said, a case of just clicking in, putting a couple of letters in just to help the, the search function within the assigned players uh, and then going from there. Sorry, that was one aspect I think I missed out there. So just in terms of when I was talking about the registration, the way players will show up specifically in this is that they will be um, registered to the team at the appropriate level. Uh, and then within the team management section of the main uh, aspect of GMS, they'll be assigned to the specific team that this match card is for. Um, and then that will mean that they then come up in this list. Um, so if I just go into match events, so this isn't mandatory. Um, for the predominance of our competitions um, in the women's leagues. It's only mandatory at PWR level. Um, and then at um, in the men's game, it's only um, a, so at the Premiership Championship and National Leagues. Um, but we are encouraging people um, to utilise it because, again, that gives all the nice kind of stat stuff that I was talking about before uh, and what that then generates. So in terms of match events, so that will be things such as uh, who scored, uh, if there's any disciplinary issues, so i.e. that's the yellow and red cards in this instance, um, and then any substitutions that you may make within the game, which helps track the, the minutes that I showed earlier on. So if I just, for example, go into scoring, uh, and we so then it's, again, pick from the dropdown. Uh, in this instance, we'll say the Jelly Belly scored um what type of score was it so try drop goal conversion penalties you can you can also notice if someone's taken a shot at goal in a conversion and missed uh just for kind of full uh full statistics obviously that helps with percentages for your kickers for now i'm just going to say um that there was a try scored uh, and then it was scored by john you should hopefully be able to see these little red stars um these are the mandatory aspects of the event um, so in the scoring aspect, you don't need to put in the minutes. Um, you can just put in the information that I've provided there. So as soon as I've clicked add event, it comes up as successfully saved, which is great. Um, and then you can see there that it's been added down there that John scored. Um, just to show you an example of, uh, again, a substitution one, uh, I will do this with the Invincibles. 
uh, just because I've got players on both sides. So I can see what minute it happens in. So let's say it's 55th. Um, James is coming off uh, for, sorry, James Cleaver is coming off for James May uh, and just noting the reason. So whether that's just a simple injury, whether it's tactical, uh, obviously HIA won't happen in this regard. Um, but again, I will just put it in as tactical on and off because that's obviously mostly what it's going to be. Uh, and then we just click add event. Uh, and then we go from there and then you can see it's added in that there's a there's a uh, a substitution one there. Um, just to show that they all show up at once. Um, so then that's adding those ones. Uh, and then again, the discipline one is of a, of a similar thing where, so if I put this in at 65 uh, and say the offending player was James May because they were on the field. Uh, and then you can then see kind of like the technical aspects of it. Uh, sorry, the aspects of whether it's a technical or a foul play. Um, in uh, uh, at the top levels, that is important, and sometimes these will need to be changed between being a technical or a foul play because it affects suspension. Um, but again, if you're looking at doing it uh, kind of lower down the structures, then that's not as big of an issue. And again, if I just click add event, um, after putting those drop downs in, then that shows that up. So they will then all populate into a bit I'll show you in a second. Um, Sorry, just uh, just a good time to pause for just for a second there just a question that's come in um does the match card have to be completed live can you do this live or can you do it afterwards um as the first part and then we'll go to the second. yeah so in, so in terms of the the match events no they can be due after the, after the card has been uh submitted <clears throat> and confirmed um obviously your uh your score submission that it, that does have to be in by a certain time as per regulation uh, and similar with the actual confirmation of the match card, but you can go back in and add these afterwards because I appreciate there's um, a lot of times the people who are the match card administrators are also probably doing about 20 other jobs. Um, so it's not, it, it might be easier to go back and do it the next day or whenever else it may be um, and then go from there. So no, it doesn't need to be done straight away. No worries. And, and probably you may get to this in a minute, but uh, they're just uh, saying that. Uh, Getting the ref signature and the opposition's team manager signatures are there. Is that required in certain leagues? Cool. Uh, yeah. No, I'll get to that one. I'll we'll get onto that one once we get in the confirmation tab. But that's good. Uh, it's a good flag to to chat through when we get to that one. Um, right. So that that is that is match events. That's how match events work. Um, again, appreciate it. it. Might not be the easiest thing to do during the game unless you've got someone dedicated to doing it. But I think in terms of of doing it, it, it certainly adds value when you've got the opportunity to do so. And once I've kind of been through this match card, um, what I'll do is I'll come back, I'll, I'll show you some of the, the features in the website as to what that then feeds into. Um, so then we get in the post-match tab. Um, so this is where you're going to input your score. So there'll be, again, another drop-down. Um, you'll always want it as a result. If it gets to the point where something is in as a walkover or something is in, is in as postponed, um, please make sure that you contact your league secretary rather than input your input it yourself. Uh, the only scores that uh, the club should be putting in uh, in the RFU leagues is, a, is if it is a, a resulted fixture. Um, again, similar with abandoned. Um, with abandoned, you want to make sure that you you do input it, but then you in the notes section you'll know what what's happened, uh, and then obviously someone will probably reach out after that to dis to kind of just discuss that a little bit further. But in terms of putting in the result, so we go we go to uh, match result, put result in there, um, just for the sake of maths. Um, we're going to go twenty and then five. Uh, this try scored has to be filled in, um, because it obviously affects bonus points. If you don't. Uh, if I just scroll down, if I try and submit it, you will see that it tells you that you have to uh, you have to put in the number of tries scored, otherwise it won't work. Um, it isn't quite smart enough to detect it automatically what it should be or whether or not it mathematically makes sense. Uh, so please just make sure you get this right. Uh, obviously, with the scoreline I've got, that's that's a potential uh, to work, and obviously that will then give uh, Invincibles as the home team their try bonus point. Um, you can see there the suspected concussion tab. So what I was talking there. So if we say, um, 
it is little so then this is obviously every player that is currently in this fixture obviously for you, when you do this there will be a far longer list of players um but i can just click on one of these click add player uh, and then when it's all confirmed um that will then trigger the email that i mentioned before to go to the player um if it is a adult player and the rugby safe lead if it is an age grade player because as i mentioned it's in some of our age grade national cups um, it will be sent to the parent of the player and the rugby safe lead. Uh, and then obviously it's just a case of just ticking in that box there. Um, this is just additional information. This is fine for what we're doing. Uh, if there's any issues with the team colours, to note that. If they posted uncontested scrums again, just to note that as may be. Um, so if I now click submit score, because I filled in the, um, the new amount of try scored, this should now work through. Just as the website loads. Uh, and so now you can see that that's now updated at this time uh, to see that I've just put that in. So that's, that's the score submitted. What we now need to do is confirm the match card. So what we do with that, it's just uh, my web browser. Uh, so confirmation tab, um, you will see home team completed. Uh, yes, no. So this is what the majority of teams will see. Uh, again, if, you, if you're involved at a higher level, you will sometimes see home team completed, away team completed, and referee sign off. Um, if it looks just like this, which as I said is the majority of the leagues, you click home team completed and then you click uh, confirm, uh, sorry, not confirm, submit match card at the bottom. Um, and as long as it will eventually then come up with approved here, you don't need to click into this. It's just like, it's just a signifier, uh, but it will come up as approved if everything is all right. As I mentioned before, if it is something where um, the away lineup isn't in, for example, and that's set to mandatory, it will set it to pending um, because it's, the match cause confirmation is pending the away lineup going in. Um, but as I said, most times it should just go straight through approved if, as I said, you play at the higher levels, kind of National League and above, or uh, PWR and the women's, um, then there will be the other three. Obviously, in that instance, the home team will need to complete their information. The away team will then uh, will need to click yes and submit it. Um, the away team will need to do so, and then the match official will need to do so as well. Um, obviously, occasionally, the, it might be that one, either the away team and or the match official need to get away or get away quickly before this gets done. Mm -hmm. This can be logged into at any time, but obviously we need to try and make sure it's done as soon as possible to hit the, uh, to hit the appropriate regulatory times that are noted. Um, so if that is the instance, then that will come up. Um, what you will see, I'm going to go through the mobile version a little bit quicker after this. Um, they automatically say away team and, and ref, but there's no boxes to tick, but it does just display it. Um, so in this instance, just to confirm it, I'm going to click home team completed, and then I'm going to click uh, submit match card. And this now will come up saying match card submitted. And then again, timestamp to say that it's been submitted. Um, what will that, that will then do is generate, and this is how you know how you'll know it's went through, is it should then generate a PDF uh, email uh, that will get set, sent straight through to all the match card administrators in the home and the away club uh, and your league secretary as well. So what that PDF will look like, uh, and if you scroll down in the summary page and click um, produce match report, it will do the exact same thing. Um, but as you can see here, um, this is what it will then look like. So you'll get all the lineups, you'll get the score at the top, et cetera. Uh, you can see who signed it off, the lineups and at what time, uh, if there was any yellow cards. Um, and then once we scroll down, we'll be able to see who signed it off for the final confirmation. Uh, and then this will show you kind of the scoring sequence. And obviously that's the one try we put in for the Jelly Bellies. Again, obviously this might then get filled in for the Invincibles as well. Uh, and then uh, substitutions again, that will list all of those and it will list them in order if we've got the minutes. Um, and then that will be that. So that is um, that is how a desktop match card works. Um, just while I mess around with my computer here. Uh, Ian, is there any other questions that have come in? Yes, um, just a, a couple of bits. Um, just to confirm that um, there is no paper 
scorecards that need to be to be done. It's all electronic on this match cards on the online platform, isn't it? Yeah, for um, yeah, for uh, all our few leagues, it will be all electronic match cards. If you're having issues with submitting, there is still phone numbers uh, to sub- to get the score in. Um, we still got our result agent, uh, Bob Morrison, uh, and his team, uh, but this is the primary method. Um, and then how long do we have after a game to complete this? So that will depend on the, the regulation. So it's it's worth checking. This should be in regulation. Oh, we've changed them all around now. Uh, regulation six, um, that it will be within that. Within that score is generally around half five on the day. Um for a, for a kind of a 2.15, 3 o'clock kickoff. Uh, and then I think it's 40 hours off the top of my head, but I would just double check that in terms of the regulations within regulation six um, as to what the deadline is uh, to get the whole electronic match card confirmed. Um, but in theory, aside from wanting to get the match events on the initial uh, PDF that gets sent out with, when the match card's confirmed, um, there's not it's perfectly fine to submit the score and then go straight into submitting and confirming the match card. No worries. Uh, and one from Hannah. Um, do you have to go into competition builder first because she's selecting the Halbro Northwest Colts League before you go to match cards? Um, when she goes into match cards, it's empty with no tabs. I'd probably suggest maybe check your roles and permission levels. But Simon, is there anything more to add to the yeah, so what what you should see on this side, if you're um, if you're trying to put it in when you log in uh, the competition management module, uh, you should see you should you should see match card. If you are only a match card administrator, um, in terms of any competition rules, all you will see when you come into this is uh, is match card. Um, if you have some additional competition management or organizing uh, responsibilities and rules, then that's when competition builder will come up. Um, but you should just be able to go straight into the match card module uh, within this. If you can't see the match card um, bit as you go into it, um, then what has probably happened is you've got you've got the right permission level, but you don't have the match card administrator role. So you might just want to get that checked first. Because um, if I just click up here. So basically, because obviously, again, I have slightly different access, I can see these five things here. Um, but most people, again, if they're just a, if they're a match card administrator, will be able to see the match card one, and that will that will be it. As if some people who, if they run like obviously the Halbro leagues is a really good example. Um, if they're if um, if you're involved in the organisation of those, then you'll be able to see the competition builder aspect as well. But as I said most people should just be able to see match card. But if you're ever looking to fill a match card in, then it will just be the match card bit that you need. Oh, and a, a one from Anthony, just who decides whether a fixture is set as mandatory to enter the names of players? Um, the competition organiser or us. is the, It's all the RFU leagues that that will be the case. Um, like this year, there's obviously all players have to be registered to play. So. That's it. Thank you. Uh, and just one uh, another one on uh, I think you covered it there's one from Victoria just around clarity on time frames again that depends on the league and the competition that you're playing in and the regulation Victoria so um, I would go and check what uh, league your team are playing in and then the relevant regulation or competition organiser if it's a, a CB competition for example it's fine yeah thanks Ian I've just checked with someone at our club it's fine I've got the answer but thank you for responding appreciate it no worries. Cheers, Victoria. Um, and then Russ, have, um, just before we move on, last one. Um, Russell, if you're getting an error message on screen, best thing to do is to submit a ticket into Community Rugby Help, and one of the team will be able to sort that issue out for you. Um, so if you submit a ticket with a screenshot of the error message that you're getting, then one of the team will pick that up tomorrow morning. A nice one. Yeah. Uh, uh- Error messages are generally technical, and then that is outside my remit. <laughs> I can I can, make, I can make it work when it when when all is going well. But after that, it goes to the technology gurus. Um, what I'll just show you before I go into uh, the mobile version, which again I will just kind of flash through because I've got a recording for that one, um, is just show you with the new website what what we can kind of do. Um, so this is the the new fixtures and results for those of you who haven't seen it for this year. 
Um, this I, I've searched for Birmingham Mosley just so I had it up. Uh, so this is their fixtures from last year. Um, all those familiar filters are now on the side rather than across the top. Um, but I'm just going to go click into this. So this is a National League One game from last season. Um, you can kind of see all the key match events here that are just kind of uh, summarised here. Um, what I'm just going to do um, is just scroll down a little bit. So again, all of that information is just coming up um, from where those match events that you saw me put in, like the substitution, the um, the point score, the, the scoring system and the uh, substitutions. So you can see the breakdown of the game in terms from a team perspective um, as, to, as to what happened. So there's obviously quite a bit went on. Um, and that goes all the way down. There's your disciplinary stuff at the bottom. Um, if I go in the lineups again, so that can come in into here. Um, it should be noted that if need be, because uh, we know there's certain scenarios where a player uh, may not want their name to appear on the front face and website. Um, if that is the case, they can reach out to our safeguarding team. And there is a way that we can get it so that this just comes up as name withheld. Um, so but please just contact our safeguarding team if that's the case. Um, if I just go on the timeline, um, that's just going to be an expanded version of what I showed you above there. Um, but if I just click into one of the players, so click into a keel, for example, um, and then what this will bring up is a keel's basically personal profile of all the stuff that it, that he's got on match card. So we can see that he's got 107 appearances all time. Uh, he scored 42 tries. Akil scores quite a lot. <laughs> uh, plays out on the wing for Mosley at the minute. Um, but then you can break that down um, into kind of the different appearances, then which matches they've played across the season. That can be broken down from a season-by-season season perspective. Um, but again, that's just generated off the information that's put in, in through the match events. Um and I think that's quite a useful. That's quite a good feature now to kind of show off this sort of stuff. Uh, there is also like a player and team comparison tool as well, which I think. So if I just go on to the next one, so this is just again all time. Um, again, teams just chosen at random. So this is all. Um, all of the. Um, again, all time based on the statistics that we've got within the electronic match cards. Um. So that some of these will be going back to kind of 2016, 17 when it when these started. So you can see kind of all of the wins that they've got, uh, or had, sorry, the points they scored. And again, that can be broken down into the various seasons as well. Um, like it's been suggested, obviously, this is useful for some people when they're putting match programs together, um, to just kind of compare across these kind of things. Um, and again, you can do it on a player level as well. Um, but I'll let you guys kind of um have a look at that on your own time. So that was the desktop version that I showed off. Um, and what I'm going to do, there's a video here, so I'm just going to talk over this. This will be a bit quicker. But again, uh, this is what most of you will see. As I mentioned before, this isn't an app. It's just a different URL. Um, this is it done on a desk, on a on a laptop. Uh, but obviously, it is. Uh, this view works better on a mobile. But the um, in terms of what you can do on each of them, it is about a 99% uh, crossover in terms of what you can do on the desktop, you can do on the mobile. Um, so what you'll get is you'll log in the same, you'll be asked for your, your username and your password, uh, and then this will bring up all of the teams for the clubs, club or clubs uh, that you are a match card administrator for. Um, so obviously for me, it's Invincibles here. So we'll just go through this process and I'll just talk over the video. Um, so yes, yeah, so this will be all this. So clicking into the first team, so I can see the upcoming fixtures, which will be the fixtures for that week. Um, just because that's where I can get the information in, I'll click on the past ones. Um, because obviously you can only confirm the cards once they're in. So click in. That's the summary screen that will again load up with all the information once it's all been inputted. Um, so what we're going to do is go into the lineup for the for this first team. Click the 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 white cross in the top corner, and then it's just a case of typing in the player's name, clicking it in this instance, and then putting in a minute of the position, uh, and then you can just click done if it's just one player at a time, or you can just find the next player and then put them in as well. So then you click done at the bottom, uh, and that will load up in a second. Clearly, I was taking my time to click on stuff. There we go. So then you can see now in that lineup, um, that's then dropped that in. 
And again, that will slowly fill all the way out um, as you input the, all the players. Um, and then that's there's a save at the bottom right there that you can see, um, or at the bottom now, then you can see it. Um, and then from that, you can then click save, and then that will keep that in. And again, that's all time-stamped. Again, similar scenario, uh, just looking for a position to put them in. Again, just type in part of the name in, clicking done. Uh, and then you again you can see at the bottom it goes to clear all or save, click save, and then that will load itself up. Uh, and you'll be able to see that it um uh, it again timestamps it. So events is just the match events aspects so again, clicking the, the plus. Um you can't see it on this, but when for some reason on the video, but when you click on the drop down, it will give you the options that were the same on the other ones. Uh, and then it's just a case of dropping them all in. So in this instance, just put doing a match event for um, for a try scored. Uh, you'll see that that brings it up. Um, we generally recommend that, um, or it's a lot easier to do it on the sideline on this mobile version, um, just because, again, it's kind of optimized for a phone screen, um, and you should be able to do everything that you need to do within it. Um, so, yeah, so once that's all done, uh, again, so score is just your post-match screen now. So you'll select the result type. Again, when you click on that, actually, it will come up with a drop-down. But again, we're just putting result in. Um, similar, again, if you try and um, submit it with just the, the, the score without the try scored, it will give you a pop-up to tell you that you can't do it. And then you just need to put the scores in, uh, the amount of try scored. Again, click Submit. <laughs> Uh, and then that does that. And then it will move it on to the confirmation tab. Uh, and this is what I was talking about, where you can see it's got the three, but there's only the one of them to tick. Um, so then that's it done. And you can see the timestamp. That will, again, trigger that email that will have the, the report PDF in. Um, and that's how it's done. Um was there any questions there around the, the mobile version? Again, in terms of doing it, it, it is just an optimized version of the desktop version. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there's any more questions come in there yet. Ian. Yeah, just when, from, from Gary, can you enter match events after the result has been submitted? Yep. So you can you can go back in and do you can go back in and do it after the score has been put in uh, and after the confirmation. Um, in an ideal world, again, it doesn't have to be the case. You can get it in, you would put it in before, after, you, well, if you can do it live, then great. If you, But ideally, you would do it between putting the score in and confirming the card, just because that means that the initial PDF that's then sent out will have all of, if you're doing the match, if you, it will have all of those match events on it rather than you having to produce another one, um, which is just done through the summary screen. Um, but again, if, if it's that you need to make sure, or you just want to make sure you've got it confirmed in time, um, so you're hitting those regulation deadlines, then that's fine, and then you can just go in and add it in after that. That's right. And um, one from Tony: um, Will the England rugby website show stats for age grade players, senior and junior Colts? Um, I can take that one if you. At the, at the moment, no. Um, it is adult. Um, uh, at the moment, but maybe one day in in the future, uh, we may look at that. But at the moment, as it stands right now, just uh, adult. Um, and then. Adam, um, who can see that he's got match card administrator role under his roles, but he cannot see any fixtures under the competition management tile. Is there another level of permission? So if you are an electronic match card administrator, you need level three or one um, permission level as well as uh, the role. Sam, you got anything to build on that in, in that bit? Uh, no, I mean, the, the other thing, just to double check, is obviously just double check the date parameter. If you've already got level one or three, is just check the date parameter. Um, obviously, at the minute, it will just be set to this week, uh, and a lot of teams won't have games that are that are necessarily set up um, on the system f at this weekend. Obviously, it'll be next weekend. So just, yeah, double check those date parameters if you've already got that permission level. Um, I know, because otherwise it should show up fine. But again, if you're having further issues with it, then as Ian mentioned before, please submit um, a ticket uh, and then the, the help desk can have a look at it. That's great. Um, One more question has come in just, yep. around, um, just around 
in the future, will we do we have any plans for functionality to manage availability for training of games and manage selection? Um, I'll take that one. Um, uh, it's something we're we're exploring and looking at at the moment. Um, not at this point in time, but yeah, it's on. We we are looking at different options as we move forward. As as you all know, technology keeps moving forward all the time, and we have to to move with the times. But um, right now, um, we're we're not looking at uh, and uh, you know availability for training, but when you know it is on the radar um, as part of our platform for rugby uh, progress in the in the future. Um, but at the moment, um, you know you're not going to see that straight away. Uh, probably one for you, Simon. Um, do suspected concussions also get reported to anyone at, at the club once the match card has been submitted, or is it only the player that gets that email? No, so that 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 will automatically go to the rugby safe lead as well, uh, which I believe is one of the golden rules. Um, so there should be someone in, in the club that's made aware. I'm pretty sure it also goes to if it's been allocated the team manager, um, so that they're aware. But there's definitely at least the rugby safe lead, um, because yeah, sometimes we have to protect players from themselves. Um, so we just have to make sure someone from the club is aware as well. Should also just note with the suspected concussion stuff that is kind of constantly the advice from that is as we are, is kind of constantly monitored and overlooked by our, our player welfare team. Um so if there's kind of new information or new things, then they will they will add into that that automatic send out that, that gets triggered when that goes. Nice one, Simon. Um one more from Gary. Um, do we still need to assign players to their individual teams within a club so that their details can appear on the match card or is it just being registered enough? No, they'll need to be assigned to the uh, appropriate team as well. Um, Gary's just, I think you're asking, is that for all, is electronic match card for all ages? Um the answer is no, if that is what you're asking, but do come off mic if I've interpreted that any differently. So electronic match card is for, for adults and then dependent in age grade on on if your local competition. So we've already discussed the the Halbro uh, league in the Northwest Colts League. You know, they're using the electronic match card, but it's not something that, you know, every every age grade um section is uh, or area is running so um it's primarily uh for for adults with uh, a sprinkling of uh of age grade wouldn't you say simon and i'd say so if if you're a competition organizer even if you're wanting to try and influence your competition organizer if they want to reach out to uh their local competition development officer um they can kind of help with the setup in terms of that um, if that if that's something that you're interested in, if you are running an age grade competition, or even if you are running one of kind of the the adult merit tables or merit leagues uh, or the kind of non RFU league competitions, um, like obviously we want to help support uh people who are running those as well. Uh, another uh, another one um from John is allocating tries and conversions to players as part of match events mandatory. Uh, depends what level you play at. Um, so in in the men's leagues, uh, in national leagues and upwards, yes, it is. Um, in the women's, uh, just PWR, um, Premiership Women's Rugby, is it mandatory? Uh, the rest of the leagues down, uh, it is. Uh, it's an option that's available. Um, uh, but it's not mandatory. Cool. Uh, and Gary's just actually confirmed, actually, his question was around head injuries. So um, is a suspected concussion for all ages, including age grade? Is that on the electronic match card? If... Uh, it, 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 it can be, basically. So that is a setting that is uh, picked on and off by the competition organiser. Um, so they, they, could, they can switch that on. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned before, that will go um to the player's parent if it's an a if it's an age group um and just one from jackie if if they're running an electronic match card there's more than one team for an age group can players be assigned to both yeah. teams as there may be movement between teams during the season 
Yeah, uh, yeah, it would be the same if the adults. Obviously, some players might play in the first one week and in the seconds another week. They can be at the same time. They can be assigned to multiple teams. Yep. Uh, just a, uh, another one from Adam. Lots of questions coming in now, guys. It's good. Um, if the player is uh, registered but not showing up when typing in the name, do they need linking with the team? Uh, potentially is the answer with that. So yeah, the, as I said, the, the two main things to check are. Um, are they reg- well three two two and a half things shall we say one are they registered two are they registered to the appropriate level depending on the team so I do they need to be RFU registered to play in that level that they're playing at um, or do they just need to be club registered um, in the basically for the leagues where RFU registration is required um, there there is a tick box in the setup that basically say um, that you need to the player needs to be RFU registered. So if they haven't had that uplift in their registration, then they may not show up. Uh, but the other thing to check will be whether or not they've been assigned to the team, uh, the appropriate team as well. Uh, just another quick thing on registrations. One of the other things that's been brought in uh, at levels where there is club registration this year uh, is retrospective registration. So this is just kind of along the lines of um, if there's a player who just turns up on on the Saturday or the Sunday morning, um, possibly turns up at half time. They're new to the club, uh, or they they're just helping out when you haven't had a chance to get them registered prior to kick off. Um, there's a there's a window of time where that where they can be registered, uh, and then assigned obviously, and then they can be put onto the electronic match card. Um, again, please check the regulations with respect to that. Uh, but that's only at the the levels where. Uh, it's only club registration, re- club registered players that will be playing. Um, again, those players can also be added in after the card has been confirmed as well. Good stuff. Um, thanks, Simon. Um, one from Sean, just where can you see what levels and access you have in GMS? Sean, if you go into your personal uh, profile, your dashboard, you slide down onto roles and you can see what roles you have been assigned and in terms of permission levels, you can ask an administrator at your club to see what permission level you have been granted. Um, so that's a nice and easy one there. And I think we've covered this off, but just to double check it off, one from Gary, just around refereeing, signing off the electronic match card, Simon. Yeah, again, that that will only be it's that will only be kind of those upper level games, um, kind of national, the national leagues and above in the men's and the PWR and the women's. Um, otherwise, there's there's nothing for the officials to to sign off. Awesome, um, but they also get chased at those top levels to to sort it out. So, um, so me, but yeah, try and catch them before they lose. Excellent. Any more questions, guys? So I mean, I I've just got a kind of a few tips of stuff to, to just quickly go through and then kind of yeah. summarize and then obviously if people kind of come up with anything else that's fine um so tips again most of this is pretty self-explanatory one of them we've already done <laughs> you've attended a webinar to kind of learn and keep yourself up to date as to what's going on um there are those guides that i mentioned on the community rugby help um part of the website um Again, if you if even if you just type in an electronic match card, that's enough of a keyword to bring them up. Um, if you've got a more specific query, again, kind of type it in and then it will direct you to potential uh guides that are helpful. There's obviously not just stuff around electronic match card on there, but across kind of across the gamut. Um, if you cannot find in the kind of guides what you're looking for, uh on that community rug- rugby help across the kind of top of it, uh, there's the opportunity to, uh, to submit a help request and then that will get sent through um into our into our ticket basically create a ticket um that doesn't necessarily specifically need to be a ticket uh, a technical technological issue um there's people from uh various departments that are on there including myself um so that might find that that will find its way to the appropriate person based off that as need be um and then yeah i think the general summary is what kind of why what we're doing this for and why we're doing it is doing all under one system allows for a better support offering um it then kind of gives you guys all this information uh to help with player management coaching marketing aspects of things 
Um, it gives the players a chance to show off their achievements, um, especially once we get that clubhouse up and running in and around October. Um, and again, um, please utilize those guides uh, on community rugby help. And then if that you can't find the answer you're looking for, uh, submit a ticket and one of our helpful help desk people will get back to you. Um, that's me. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Simon. Um, and probably one thing to just highlight is that for the third year in a row now uh, we will be there will be a phone line in operation at the start of the season on weekends um, to support any technical issues that are basically people if people are having technical issues with electronic match card and that's available I'll just drop that in the chat but I will send that up, um, up in a follow-up email as well anyway um, but I'll just drop that in there now um, that number will be in action for the the for the start of the season period basically um which is our peak peak time and that's basically to to support you guys if you're if you're struggling and uh, um uh, it's there it's there just in case um just a final question there from hannah just around in in the colts league games up in the northwest refs had to sign off paper paper cards that may be just something that your cb have decided to or the competition organizer in your region has decided that they are doing as well. Um, so it doesn't, so it just depends for everybody on this call what your competition organizer has decided is to happen in, in that competition as to what you are required to do. Um, so hopefully that covers that. I don't know if there's anything more you want to add to that one, Simon. Yeah, can I just, just ask, sorry, can I just ask? It's Hannah here. It's, um, if the the refs are still having to sign technically sign off the the, the games, how and the question is how do they do this electronically? So that can be done. Uh, again, it's the same within the setup of the competition. Um, so kind of when people when the organizer is marking off, um, if they want match events, if like get the suspected competition, uh, so suspected concussion table and that sort of thing, uh, they can click in there that they want ref sign off. Um, what it will do is the referee. Oh, actually, no, it won't because they're not panel referees. Um, so yeah, that would have to be something that was done on paper as is, just because of the the way it works um, at the minute in terms of with the referees is that they are allocated. But at the minute, there's only the panel referees that can be allocated. So if they would have to be, that would have to be something that was done at a local level in terms of a process. So we'd have to do the electronic match card, but also have a paper copy at the same time for the referees to sign off. So if, if 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 the if the if that was the decision that you wanted to make to have your match officials to to sign well, something that's, off, it's not yeah. my decision. That's the Halbro League decision, as far as yes. I understand. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm just talking okay. collectively. Okay, we've got a couple of minutes. Is there any uh, further questions from anybody on the call at all? Where do we find this video after? Well, you will find that, Sean, on the Platform for Rubber YouTube channel. Um, I will also send a link to that once it's been uploaded. Um, so as soon as I've uploaded it, it'll be up later this week. Um, I'll ping a message around to everyone uh, and you can access it accordingly. Cool. I think so. that's it. Really good session, uh, guys. Um, thanks for for coming on uh hope you ha have a fantastic start to the season and we're all looking forward to it and thanks so much for giving up your time and volunteering to keep our great game uh in good shape thanks guys thanks so much for you thanks everyone thank you